argument for, let's say, uh, God's existence that you find uh, particularly uh, powerful? I believe in uh, that arguments stack up, that they're cumulative, that as for any scientific theory, a bit of evidence makes it marginally probable, a bit more evidence makes it have a significant degree of probability, a bit more evidence makes it more probable than not, and so on. So they stack up, but uh, uh, my starting point and uh, one of the most powerful arguments is the argument from the orderliness of the universe. Uh, what I mean by that is that every particle of matter, every atom, uh, is governed by exactly the same scientific laws. Well, what that means, if we just take one example of Newton's law of gravity, it's not quite accurate, we know now, but the basic point remains. Uh, every particle of matter in the universe attracts every other particle of matter with a force proportional to its mass multiplied by that of the other particle divided by the square of their distance apart. And that applies to every atom everywhere in the universe. Now, that's a very strong, and there are similar generalizations um, in respect of uh, the three other forces which, which govern the interaction of material objects. Um, now, it's a very striking thing that everything should behave in the same matter. The universe way. The universe were thr thrown up by chance. You'd expect some things to behave one way, some things to behave a different way. Some things to behave one way one day, different way the next. But they all always behave in the same way. Now, why is that? Um, uh, if uh, there was a god who made us, uh, he has a reason for doing that. And the reason is, um, it's only if we live in an orderly universe that we can possibly handle it. That's to say, um, uh, it's only if uh, a brick stays on top of another brick and stays there more strongly if it's held, uh, if you put uh, cement between it, that we can build houses. It's only if when you sow seeds and water them, they produce plants that you can have food. So. Uh, so the small scale regularities about uh, particles of matter, uh, it's a consequence of those that there are these large scale regularities. And uh, of course, um, if they didn't hold, we wouldn't exist, but nevertheless, the regularities are such as to produce us. Uh, so um, there is a regular there. Everything in the universe behaves in exactly the same way but it's, it's a way that also produces us. Now, if there's a God, he has reason to produce us because we are quite good things. Um, and uh, therefore, he has right a reason to produce a universe uh, out of which we will eventually evolve. And he therefore has reason to produce an orderly universe uh, such that uh, we can use it to, to make choices. Um, if we want food, uh, and prepared to take the trouble. We can sow seeds, water them, they'll produce it. If we want to hurt people, uh, we can burn down their crops. Um, we, the, op the operation of regularities in the world allows us to choose which to use in order to make a difference to things. So um, there is one can expl understand why the universe should be regular and should be such as to evolve humans if there is a god. If there isn't a god, it seems to me incredibly unlikely that by chance there should have occurred these regularities eventually leading to us. The objection to that line of thought that would come from uh, postulating that there's an infinite number of uh, universes, so it shouldn't be surprising that one of these would uh, end up being like ours. Well, you should never postulate more universes unless there is good reason to do so. That is to say, unless uh, you have data which are best explained by that. Uh, so our only grounds for postulating more universes than this one would be if the simplest physical theory of various goings on in this one would be such as <laughs> to, uh, to have the consequence that there would be other universes. For example, some physicists say the simplest theory of various matters is to suppose that eventually uh, 
long ago there was uh, a vacuum space, still is, a, th um, uh, a special sort of space that sometimes condenses and produces a big bang and that leads to universes and it's doing it all the time. Well, uh, this is a rather shaky theory I think, but it might be true. Uh, but if it is true, um, what it means is that, as it were, this larger whole, the multiverse, is itself governed by laws. Um, uh, if it isn't, we have no reason to suppose there are any other universes. It's only if it is governed by laws that we universes are um, somewhat like ours, but um, differing from it in certain ways. Now, that might be the case. But then the problem, if it is a problem, at any rate, the, the issue uh, goes one stage higher. Why is, our, why is there a multiverse, an ensemble of these universes, which has the particular characteristic that it throws up, among other universes, a universe like us, ours, which has the characteristic of producing us? So, um, because there are innumerable logically possible multiverses which wouldn't do the behave in a regular way, but every particle in all these other universes have to behave in a regular way. So, there's a lot more regularity in this case to be uh, um, in need of explanation. Maybe this is true, maybe it is like that, uh, but um, it doesn't make any difference to the